So hello guys and welcome to my channel. If you're new to my channel, please make sure to subscribe to my channel but also hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on future update videos. So today guys, I want to show you why VV actually could fail in the upcoming month. I will give you an analysis of the team, especially the dev team. I already made this analysis of the team in the last year. If you want to have a look at this video, you can have a look at it here. But today I especially want to have a look at the executing kind of things, how they are executing in terms of the VV app. The overall analysis is of the four domains of the Cliff Strengths. So if you don't know about it, if you want to do the assessment, I'll leave the link in the description down below. This will probably also help to make an assessment of your personal career looking forward, right? But today we want to have a look at the execution of the VV team, how they are doing, especially the dev team. They hired now a new product manager, which is Mitch. So first, let's have a look who, who is Mitch and if he can help the team. From a background point of view, um, I've spent the last, I don't know, 12 odd years of my career, specifically in media, um, 10 of which I've spent in, the last 10 of which I've spent working at, um, or in new, one of New Zealand's largest digital publications um, that was spanning both Australia and locally now in New Zealand. So. A lot of that has been based in product. In fact, you know, the entire background of the last decade or so has been really focused on creating digital products for audiences primarily. Yeah, so if, if we look at the profile of Mitch at LinkedIn, he seems to be a, like a really nice guy and also he has a lot of experience in product manager. However, I don't know how tech savvy he is actually. So at the moment we would need really a product manager who has also a lot of experience in yeah, the crypto kind of um, state. I mean, he, he can bring a lot of uh, structure into the team, which will help, but I don't know how he can help on, on the tech side of things. So let's have a look what his first impressions are of the dev team, of the VV team so we get a, a better analysis ourselves. I guess um, from, from what I've seen, I just in that space where they need a bit of guidance um, and they need a bit of support and structure in order to get to an established kind of almost machine-like cadence of delivery. So that is the, the behaviors that we need to embed within the team. And as I think everybody understands that embedding new behaviors and new processes do take a little bit of time people do take time to adapt and the interesting thing about vv overall in terms of where this development sits is that people are all over the world um and there is no um place where everyone is gathered like you know a traditional company would be this is a true you know 2022 um digital business where you know the the, the individuals that are involved in the development teams are right across the world and so working with different time zones and establishing good ways of working are some of the interesting challenges that we're facing at the moment. Yeah, so Mitch is talking about interesting challenges. So people are across the world, are working from across the world, especially also different time zones, which is quite concerning to me because in the initial phase, if you want to have an innovative product and also if you work with contractors and external people, you don't want to work in different time zones as well. So it seems a little chaotic to me. And um, also I had a look at the LinkedIn profile of Vivi and they call me. So at Vivi, you don't see actually a lot of deaf people. So mostly are in business development. And then we have also uh, Ecomi actually some engineers, but mostly from India and um, Taiwan region, which let me know that yeah, they are mostly hiring cheap devs, which is not a great sign actually if you want to be cutting edge. If you want to have the greatest product, you should also hire great people, right? Maybe from, from fun, especially they, they have a lot of um, background experience also in, in terms of processes and how to build uh, great code and APIs and so on. So let's have a look next, what Mitch thinks, which, which are the, the greatest roadblockers at the moment. Um, some of the bigger issues that we've seen at the moment, you know, are part of those growing pains that we're seeing. Um, things that should be automated are still somewhat manual. 
which is very normal and we're trying to automate them and as a result sometimes human errors do occur there are times where some of these bugs and some of these issues turn out to be much larger in terms of effort than we anticipated and therefore the capacity for um, feature development actually gets eroded in favor of addressing some of these usability issues so there are times where it goes from 90 10 to 80 20 and then it goes to 70 30 depending on the size of the bug yeah so he is also quite concerning what what he says to me um, because it seems like they are fixing a bug with another bug so they are building workarounds uh, which are not really effective and also i guess there are bugs that take on um, 80% of the dev times so that should be not the case and that all leads to um, yeah, the truth that the system is not really stable and um, there are not really like yeah, experienced developers in the team that are able to build a, a sustainable to build a stable system here but that's just a concern I don't know exactly how the dev team uh, is built. I think they are working a lot with external providers, which in my experience is also a problem because yeah, you have a lot of communications issues with external providers if you don't have the experience yourself. So what does this mean now all for MCP? Let's have a look here. And we have slipped because there are things that have come in, as I mentioned before, that have taken up quite a degree of capacity of the team to address you know there are security issues and there are stability issues in the platform that we have noticed over the last couple of weeks that would not be that would not be good if, if we did not address it overall so what we're looking to do is address those first so that we prepare the right runway for when mcp lands um, in the in the coming weeks it will be stable and you will be able to use it Got it. Okay. So again, to reiterate, it's a matter of weeks and not months. We're not talking end of Q1 no. or Q2 or anything like that, right? No, no, no. It's it's a matter of weeks at, um, at this stage. And again, right, they were talking about um, getting M MCP like at the end of the year. And now we are here in January, right? And Mitch was talking again about bugs and unstable system, which leads to a lot of concerns on my side. And I give them the take that they had problems with a payment provider buyer, right? But which was, in my opinion, also a major mistake um, to not go with different providers. So if, if you have one failure, especially in the crypto area, then you can go with another provider. So yeah, let's have a look what Alex is talking about. I recall when we first were talking about, when we were very close to payout and then it got delayed like uh, early last year, Okay. Um, we had originally had a different partner, and I think if you recall from some of the um, from some of the medium articles, there was a company reference called uh, Blue Snap, right? Okay. And in the process of the beta testing, that closed beta that we were using it, um, a, a few select like twenty to fifty, and we were kind of scaling it out more yeah. and more users to test the uh, different sizes of transactions. We realized that they weren't going to be able to. Uh, meet our needs from sure. a, a from, from a volume standpoint yeah. so that's why we um that's why we moved to wire yeah. and that's why it took a little extra longer so again right before they had wire they actually went with blue snap which is a provider which had not enough liquidity and that they only knew when they were testing it so which is also quite concerning because you should do your due diligence before, right? And also you should go with major payment providers. But however, let's get all this negativity out of the way because we are all, all here in the app because all these great licenses, all these great IPs and superheroes. And what I'm quite bullish on is that David Yu talks about these four pillars he wants to initiate right this year probably and we get some of these four pillars let's have a look what he's talking about uh, we, we have a number of pillars in, inside a company uh, we want to do and the reason why we set these pillars is uh, we want to build an empire um, and when I talk about empire I'm talking uh, I'm referring to like an empire building state building if you if you were running your car across the empire state building it's not it's only going to make a little dent to them 
And, and the reason why is because these buildings are built with major pillars. So mm -hmm. one, one of the major pillars for us right now has been in, into the superheroes, as you have described. Um, and these are very evergreen characters. People see them in, in cinematics. People see them when they, they grew up with it, whether it's from the comic and the superhero they know. The other pillar, which you are talking about, uh, uh, areas that we're looking to put focus in, into uh, number one is music. We see um, a, a great new way to bring music to the world. Um, other pillars that I really do believe that we, we, we will see a major shift into is sports category. Sports is probably one of the most sought after fandoms out there. Um, and when we talk about people love uh, superhero, sports is 10 times, 10 falls. Yeah, the fans. They, you know the fans they they go i mean it, it some, someone actually ring ring me up and told me how big a certain sport is in australia that there's over sixty thousand people went to watch the practice game just the practice game wow. in australia so it, it just shows you that sports fandom it's it's untapped into that industry and we've seen um some of the most expensive franchise out there, basketball team, football team, soccer team, Formula One, um, sports is a huge category. And 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 don't get me wrong, there there is a lot of competition in the sports arena. Um, obviously, everyone tried to fight for that uh, piece of pie. Um, we have seen many many success. Uh, Dapper Labs, fantastic. Yeah, and. David Yu is talking about the four pillars. I think the fourth pillar David is missing here is anime. So you would have anime, the superheroes, then you would have sports and music and some of them are coming this year already to the app. So I'm quite excited about that. But however, we have also a new uh, competitor in the space with Amazon. So Vivi always compares itself to Amazon. We will see how that will play out. However, I think they have to get their stuff on the tech side of things they should hire proper devs and pay them proper salary as well and then i think vb still has a good chance to be yeah a leading company in in the web3 space with that said guys let me know in the comments down below what do you think about all this what are your opinion about amazon in the web3 space and also make sure to comment down below hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on updates in the future and with that said yeah see you until the next time bye bye guys